Shalom, first and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechakwadash. Double honors unto our apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Much peace and blessings to all you sense of Akima that is pushing his 100% truth with all sincerity, faith, and charity. This is your brother Ash from the Great Millstone, Miami, coming back with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. The Lord willing, this lesson is edifying to the elect. It's going to be a quick lesson straight to the point you know in transit going into not hating laborious work okay and this is a, a lesson towards young Akim younger Akim in this truth you know coming from a, a, a young Ak in this truth himself okay I'm uh, you know uh, been in this truth about 10 years which is not very long, but you know, I was about 18 when I when I first came into this truth. So I know what it's like coming into the truth at a at a very young age. You know, I was still wet behind the ears, still green, don't really know shit about life at all. I still don't, I'm still learning. Okay, <laughs> at 27, my mind is just now starting to stabilize. You know, so. You know, this is just coming from one brother to to the next. I I, I see, and it, it's been that way. You know, as the scriptures say, the Lord uh, called a young man for their strength. So, when you look around, predominantly most of the men that's coming to this truth are young men. Okay, uh, as the scriptures say, uh, the the apostles were set forth last. Roughly paraphrasing as it were appointed unto death right so the older men most 40 50 60 year old men Israelite men they really grew up in you know other things you know being a part of different groups or organizations outside of the truth and they believe in that that's the truth or that's their truth whatever like people say which is only one truth, which is the truth that we have here at Great Millstone, okay? Because if you don't have 100% truth, you don't really you, you don't really have the truth, really, okay? But um, and of course, those who teach the same doctrine. But the point of this lesson is, as a as a young man. You know, the times that we're in now, growing up in Babylon the Great, we were taught, we were taught that, you know, you could get rich, you could get money, you can become successful uh, without hard work, without sweat equity, you know, without, you know, especially in the age now with uh, social media and uh, content creation, you have people uh becoming millionaires like you know from from scratch just at home with a camera you know and hey I'm not hey if if you're a brother that's into that and you you can make some money doing that hey I, I go for it but the 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 it's all about a mindset you shouldn't be a brother uh in this truth Calling yourself a man of the Lord, calling yourself in the truth, calling yourself an Israelite, you know, with the mindset of the same, you know, way that people of your age group think in the world. Okay. Because especially, you know, especially uh, Judah here in America, you know, and of course, it's, it's, it's that mindset is within other tribes but mainly uh judah right so-called negroes here in america a lot of a lot of uh so-called young black men don't really they, they're they're shying away from uh, uh you know honest work uh, you know hard you know grinding you know uh, having a trade or doing some heavy lifting you know and when you come into this truth and you find out that you're actually royal 
citizen, you know? You're, actually, uh, you're a royal uh, descendant, I should say. Okay? You actually come from a bloodline of nobility. Okay? Being an Israelite. So, as the scriptures say, knowledge puffeth up. You can, and and I'm not saying I haven't ever been guilty of of allowing this sort of mindset to creep in, which is a de very detrimental mindset. That, uh, like you're above that, you know, you're above uh, slavery, because that's that's really what we're talking about. We're, we're speaking of slavery. You having to go work a job that's slavery, okay. And you, you come in the truth, you find out you, 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 you can, if, if you're, let me say, if you're not guarding your mind and actually forming your mind according to the way the Lord is, wants it to be, you can develop that mindset or you, you, you just carry on that mindset into the truth. Okay. And. You, you may, the Lord may bless you with a certain job, but it's, it's a hard, it's a lot of hard work and you despise it. Well, the scriptures say not to do that. This is uh, the book of Ecclesiastes, the cuss, or the book of, or Sirach, also known as the book of Sirach, right? Chapter seven and verse 15, it says, hate not laborious work. Neither husbandry, which the Most High hath ordained. Okay? Laborious work, meaning manual labor, hard work, like construction, you know. Uh, uh, you know, you have different trades out there. Working hard, you got to lift, lift up stuff. You in the sun, you know. Uh, it says neither husbandry, which is, you know, farming. Right, you you got landscaping, right? You, you see Issachar, which is 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 uh, spiritual. That you know they are, are they are known. <laughs> okay, they are, in, uh, they are infamously known to be hard workers. Okay, and they they do all the hard, dirty jobs that nobody really want to do for less than other people would do them and when I say other people I mean other nations and even other Israelites from different tribes okay but um the Issachar in the Hebrew Yashashkar which means what he is hired alright their spiritual sign is, is the ass which is a, a burden an animal of burden okay that's why you look up anything with uh, which the scriptures say that Issachar is a, a, a strong ass. That's that's biblical. But you look up Mexico, Mexican culture. They they always showing a symbol of a donkey. That's not by coincidence. That's it's more proof that we have the truth, right? But you see Issachar on a daily basis doing these type of jobs, landscaping and out in the sun and cutting grass, you know, shit like that, and. You know, as as a so-called black man in America, we were taught that that's like low-level shit, which is it is low-level shit. But the Most High ordained it, meaning the Most High set it up that way, and it goes all the way back to Adam. Okay, and that's what this scripture is referencing by saying, uh, "Which the Most High ordained." Okay. This is uh, Genesis chapter 3 and 19, and this was after Adam ate of the fruit, right, that his wife gave him, which was the the, the wisdom, I ain't going to say wisdom, but, you know, the knowledge, as the scriptures say, the knowledge of, of good and evil, the tree, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge and good of evil, which they didn't, they didn't know evil because they never did evil. So, uh, basically... What it means by the aid of the fruit, we know they, they partook in wickedness. They partook in evil, right? They partook in sorcery. They they partook in in idol worship. 
Okay? That's what the serpent was teaching Eve, and Eve brought it back to her husband. Okay? And then they, they felt the spirit leave them, and then it, and, and, and it went downhill from there. Right? But the Lord cursed Adam. Right? He cursed Eve. He cursed the serpent. He cursed, he said, all three of y'all, right? And it's not just them. It's, it's talking about all their descendants. Right? So because of the curse the most I put on Adam, that falls on us and, and everybody, really. But mainly, mainly Jake. Because we're, we're, you know, even though Adam is the, the father of all nations, Adam, Adam came back as an Israelite. Okay, which we know Adam was Yahweh Shai, right? And one of the curses the Most High put on Adam was cursing the earth. So, because we got to understand the earth was was created for Adam. <laughs> okay, uh, the Most High gave him dominion over the earth. He was basically the king of the world. And when he sinned. And went off one of the punishments the Lord gave him was was punishing his 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 kingdom, which was the earth. He got pushed out of the garden, right? And when the, when you read the scriptures, before that the earth was in total harmony, pure harmony. It was like a utopia. You think of the 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 best way the earth could function. That's how it was. And to tell you the 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 the, the, the plants and the trees the fruit it, it would just come out you didn't have to basically farm it, it just you know you just picking fruit you didn't have to plant seeds and trim and do, do none of that okay so Adam got to enjoy all of that and after he sinned you have this curse which is Genesis chapter 3 and 19 it says in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread so that's where you get the saying, if you don't work, you don't eat. That goes back to Adam. Okay? Because how do you get bread from flour? How do you get flour from, from wheat or barley or whatever grain you plant? But it comes from a seed that you have to plant. Right? And that's bread. What about the fruits? And when you, when you really get down to the nitty gritty, you know, a lot of, you know, brothers and people, we talk about fruit, you know, how healthy fruit is. And we love fruit. Fruit is good for you. Not saying that it's not. But you got to understand, before Esau came into power and the Most High, you know, upgraded his wisdom to where he have this technology, you know. And uh, farming was uh, revolutionized. Okay, back in the ancient world, you didn't just have you can't just go to the grocery store and get a bunch of fruit. It, wherever you go, it's just fruit everywhere. Okay, unless you was on some tropical island where fruit, you know, just grows. In 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 the ancient world, it wasn't like that. You, of course you had certain fruits like dates and and figs and stuff that would grow in season though now you go to the grocery store there's fruit there that you can find all year round it was never like that in, in the ancient world most fruits that you find in a grocery store wouldn't even be nowhere near where you, you lived at and you wouldn't be able to get them you wouldn't, you wouldn't even know they exist okay I remember um, when I was like uh I remember when I was like in elementary school. I remember I was in elementary school, right? It's just one example. I was reading this book, and uh, it's a, supposed to be a historical book, right? But it was they was talking about orange. Like you had one person talking about an orange, and they were they were like, like that's a myth. Like there's no such thing as an orange. You talking about something that's sweet and juicy, and you could just cut it because. Most of the fruit that you eat, it was, it was just what was local to you. Most of these fruits that we get in the grocery store, 
is totally exotic and foreign to where you live. And if it wasn't for modern day industry and, and export import technology and different advancements and farming, right? You would you you would never you would never see most of the fruit you eat. So <laughs> you know most when you read the scriptures, a lot of the, the plant food mostly it was it was bread. Bread from flour, from you know, well from wheat, barley, right? Corn, right? These type of uh, grains, which you would have to in order to get enough of that to to get flour to make bread for the everybody to eat, you need fields of fields and fields of you know acres and acres and acres of that shit. So that's a that's a lot of work. You feel me? And you gotta remember this was before you know people were eating meat. Okay, so Adam had to work hard hard to eat and that's and that and that was from that time on all the way today but again we, we grew up with so much comfort and here in babylon the great the, the scriptures say you know they live deliciously right and we we got a taste of that here just being here which can you know uh put you in a a, a, a lazy spirit that's why you'll see different uh, tribes come from other countries and you know they they willing to do the jobs that the people that grew up here not willing to do because they think they deserve better than that right which again we we should have we shouldn't have that spirit why because again the most I ordained it Genesis 3 19 in the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread Till thou return unto the ground, for out of it was thou taken, and so like it, for dust, for out of it thou was taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. So it's no getting around it. Okay? The Lord set it up so that we supposed to work hard. Not saying that if you got a, some type of office job or whatever, you 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 don't work hard or you know that's bad or nothing like that, right? You still gotta work hard. Whatever it is you do, you gotta work hard. But you know, it's just a message to who it may concern. Just putting that out there, okay? And um, Lord willing, it was that a fine. That's all I really wanted to say. With that, I'm gonna say shalom.